and Shingo Talks here, and as you read from the beginning of the video, this will not be my most organized video, but I did finish Spider-Man maybe a week or two ago, can't remember exactly. Um, I'm on my way to 100%ing the game, so I thought I would give my review on it, having done all the story and stuff like that. As most reviews, I'd like to start off with the positives of the game, uh, one of which you're seeing right now, which is the free roaming and web swing of the game. The web swing is very fun and very fluid. There's a pretty big open world which I'll get into later and there's a bunch of other um when you get deeper into the story you unlock skill points and with those skill points you can obtain certain things that help you with web swinging and traversing. Uh the main one that I use and the main one that you'll probably see if like on the internet and stuff like that is the um the tricks you can do which gives you a little XP boost. A couple more positives about the swinging is it's momentum based so if you are like running up a wall or you're running on the street and you start swinging in the air you'll have a lot of speed and you can maintain that speed by timing your swings and stuff like that and the swinging is accurate there was a few spider-man games that did this if i'm not mistaken but i can't remember exactly which ones but basically if you're web swinging you have to be near like a building or a tree or something that you can swing from you're not just swinging like randomly in the air while traversing and web swinging through the big world, you'll find a lot of side missions, such as regular side quests, crimes you can do that appear at random, um, enemy bases where you can fight waves of enemies and basically take down these territories that are around the map. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. The map is not enormous, but it's pretty fair sized for this game. Another positive and the first example of this positive that I have in the video is the photo mode which you're seeing right now you can basically at any moment in the game nearly any moment in the game uh, hit the pause button and go into photo mode which will allow you to take a sort of a screenshot of your current moment you can select frames or backgrounds that add certain things to it you can take a selfie which makes spider-man take a like a selfie and he poses and um, you can like change the expression of his eyes and stuff like that. The mode is actually pretty detailed and there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in it. And of course after you're done making the photo in photo mode you can hit the share button and take a screenshot of it and then it's on your PS4 and it looks just how it looks in the game. You can use it as a background or a wallpaper whatever it's called for your ps4 you can use it as something else share it on twitter do whatever you want it's basically like a regular screenshot that you would take in game except that you can add stuff in it like in the game itself up next is the environment uh game taking place in new york it's very big it's a lot of people but you already know all that stuff um basically spider-man can as you see like just walk around on the street and interact with like people that are on the street and in addition to just interacting with people like saying hi to them or whatever you can press triangles at certain people and they'll like give them a handshake or a high five or take a picture or something like that and then there's some people certain people which i think appears in this video somewhere um where you can get side missions from them not like super important side missions but kind of just like those small crimes that you see around the map that are marked with the red triangle moving on to another positive and a big part of this game obviously is the combat and basically just how it feels fighting using your gadgets your web swingers stuff like that in addition to using your combos and adapting those things to your combos it's very fluid the counter system is pretty good there's gadgets you can get at a certain point that allow you to basically use counters or perfect dodges to your advantage so you can like slow down time you can instantly hit an enemy you can do a lot of stuff like that I'd say the combat is pretty much a easy to pick up hard to master sort of thing not to say that I've mastered it because I have not but the combat is always fun and it's not too difficult or too complex so if you're basically starting out the game you'll pick it up in no time and it's always pretty fun throughout the entire game 
yet another positive you're seeing right here is the customizations that you can do for Spider-Man. Uh, basically, the, stu uh, the suits you can unlock, excuse me, the suit powers that come with certain suits after you unlock them. And the gadgets that you can use, they're all customizable. Um, some suits have certain powers that come with them, like for example, the... Punk Spider-Man suit has a power where you send a shockwave using a guitar, but that power isn't tied to the suit. So if you wanted to use that power, but you wanted to use the, let's say, the Iron Spider suit, you could. The um, suits and powers are completely customizable and interchangeable, so you're not tied to just one suit or just one power. I honestly believe the biggest positive of this game is one I can't really show, but also one that I haven't mentioned yet, which is just the story of the game, and how Peter Parker and Spider-Man are portrayed. Like, it's cool to see a Spider-Man that's more experienced and knows what he's doing. It's interesting to, of course, see how Spider-Man's life intertwines with Peter Parker's life. Basically, just seeing how this different, new experience Spider-Man has his life, like things that happened in Peter Parker's life intertwined with Spider-Man's life and vice versa at a certain point. It's cool to see and it's actually very, very entertaining if you pay attention to the story. But of course, like all games, Spider-Man is not perfect. It does have some minor negatives that I'll get into right now. Although I don't have too many negatives, I also don't have all of the footage to accompany these points because I live streamed this game on Twitch and basically all the footage that you're seeing in this I got from my archives and my archives for some of my negatives disappeared. <coughs> Twitch on TV slash so pops. Um but yeah, let's get into the negatives and I'll be showing off what I can. One of my negatives around the game actually revolves around the villains, um, specific villains, so might be a spoiler if you haven't seen or played the game, so I'll put up a little warning and then take it down when it's safe, but basically there's a few villains in the game, like Taskmaster, um, Tombstone, and I can't recall if Shocker appears again or not, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say Shocker too. Um, there's some villains in the game that have like side content that you can do, but I think Shocker was the story mission, but Tombstone and uh, Taskmaster, they were both like side things that you could do, and they don't really appear again after you beat them, though this could definitely be something for like DLC or something that's just gonna maybe reference later in the game. The villains aren't really as... Like, those particular villains aren't as important, ah, important as, like, Vulture, Electro, and all those other villains. Backup needed for a chase in progress. Officers needed in the vicinity of Vanderbilt. I think another negative that's practically universal between everyone that's played this game is the Miles and MJ kind of stealth sneaking side mission things that happen within the game. Um, I'll admit, when the first, uh, the first one that happens in the museum, when that one happened, I actually kind of defended it. I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. It's not that bad. Everyone's overreacting. And then I realized there were more. Then I realized you have to do one with Miles. Then I realized there were more with both of them. And that's when I started to understand why people didn't like them. Um, they're basically just, they're really slow. The entire pacing of Spider-Man, like with the combat, the story, everything in the game is like pretty fast paced, pretty like quick moving and stuff like that. And then this kind of just happens and is really out of place kind of. It's very slow in comparison to everything else and it kind of it, it just feels out of place and they always seem to take place in things that were like a few minutes after so it only gives you relevant information on something that happened in the past which you don't really need to know it's not super important 
there is one mission with MJ where, that I enjoyed where you were like in a museum or something. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but basically you had to do like the regular stealth stuff, but you used Spider-Man to like take down enemies at the same time. So it wasn't entirely stealth and entirely the same thing. It was actually pretty unique. Also, there's times where MJ will get like gadgets and stuff like that that makes the that makes the sneaking around a bit different. So it's not terrible, but it is pretty tedious once you get a few hours into the game. Now this point, this is the negative that I wish I had the Twitch archives for. There were multiple times where enemies would like not not even like just get stuck on a wall or something like that. Like during a base battle or during one of the challenges that you can do, an enemy would get like literally stuck in a wall. Like the enemies come out of elevators or doors or whatever when you're doing those base battles, the waves. And there were multiple times in the game where enemies would literally get stuck in the doorways and I'd have to like basically just mash triangle or square at the door trying to hit them because if you press the sonar thing like your little sensor thing you can see them they're inside the building but like they're stuck and you can't hit them so I'm just mashing square next to a wall hoping to hit them and it works and I would hit them and the mission would end I'd get my credit and stuff like that but it's it wasn't terrible but there were multiple times in the game where it would happen also there was a few times where on very very specific buildings so this one is even more infrequent but very specific buildings there are like helipads and then there's staircases that go up to the helipads and sometimes if you're fighting villains on that on that little like platform or near that platform they'll get stuck under the staircase and in the same way of when they get stuck in the doorway you can't hit them you're basically just mashing square hoping that the hit connects and Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Eventually it does, hopefully, but n not always. And the last negative that I have is really not a big deal at all. It's a very, very minor thing. In some cases, it's even funny. It's not groundbreaking at all. But there are some minor, like, graphical glitches and things here and there that are just, like, weird. As you can see right here. Um, Basically, there would be... There are multiple times in the game, but these are, like, my two favorite examples right here where just some weird stuff would happen in the game like nothing again nothing game breaking which is why this is a very minor negative that's not important at all because i'm still playing the game the game is fine it's just this one thing happened that's like hey that's not supposed to be there right, these are commonly things that if you don't pay attention to them you'll miss it like it because it's nothing that's affecting gameplay necessarily it's just something that's happening within the world and like it's just something that you have to see like you have to take note of it for example this helicopter that forgot what franchise it was in anyways that is it for my review of spider-man um hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for watching before I go, I'm going to be giving my review score, um, taking everything to, into account, how many negatives I had, how many positive I had, and overall just how I felt and how I enjoyed the game while playing it through. I would say Spider-Man is a 9 out of 10. Not a perfect game, but it is very, very close. It's a good Spider-Man game, a good game, has a good story. It's got a lot of positives to it. Um, very enjoyable if you're thinking about picking it up go right ahead and do that even at full price i'd say it's worth picking up um is tons of side content after you finish the game so it's not just the base game itself and then you're done uh there's dlc coming out and i can't tell the future but i'm almost positive that that dlc will be worth it too taking into account how the game itself already was and um yeah that's gonna be it all right thank you very much for watching my name is Jenko pops this has been my Spider-Man PS4 review, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Uh, uh.